Well, good morning on this Saturday after Pentecost. We come together. I may be a, a few seconds late in, in uh, hitting the start button. I I kind of was thinking about our devotion this morning and and uh, just praising God for the time we get to spend in prayer. And so it is this Saturday. What a beautiful Saturday it is. We celebrate uh, the blessed union uh, between man and wife later today with Chris Friesen and Cassandra Rosso, so keep them in your prayers. Uh, but it is truly a glorious day that we can look at God's Word and, and be lifted up, especially during the, the dark times that our country may be uh, experiencing um, at this time. So, as we always do, let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. So, we go before the Lord at this time, and uh, we continue reading Psalms. So we're in Psalm 97, we're doing select, select verses 6 through 12. Uh, tomorrow we celebrate uh, Holy Trinity Sunday, um, and we will say uh, the Athanasian Creed, which we unfortunately only do once a year, and it happens to be on Holy Trinity Sunday, but that's what we'll be doing tomorrow, and how exciting is that? Uh, so today, if for those of you following along at home that have your Bibles open, Again, it's going to be Psalm 97, 6 through 12, and as I was mentioning the Holy Trinity, this psalm is a psalm about the, the second person in the Godhead, that is Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. So let us begin. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples see his glory. All worshipers of images are put to shame, who make their boast in worthless idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. O you who love the Lord, hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints. He delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And um, as I kind of started out this morning, we, we kind of are in a dark place in our country today. Uh, not only are we still grappling with uh, COVID-19 and trying to figure out uh, the impact in our own personal lives, the impact in our communities, our churches, and across this world. Um, but now we've taken it a step further. We've even gone into darker days uh, with the rioting, the looting. Uh, um, it, it's just become one of those things that I think many in our society today are, are questioning what's happening and uh, why are things looking so dark and gloomy. Um, especially as we enter into the summer months where we have the most sun, um, June 21st. You know, I, I look forward to that day every year. It's the, the lightest day of the year. And yet we're, we're leading up to that uh, with, with dark days right now. And, um, and so to receive a word today that, that reminds us that God is still working through all the muck and mire is, is so important. I want to look at verse 11 today. Light is sown for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. And one of the commentators says, like a seed which will always come up and sprout and bring fruit, no matter how bad the season. And, and I remember when I first got to town here about six months ago and talking with some of the farmers, they said the last couple of years have, have just been horrible, but yet they still had crops that came up and, and they still were able to make it through the season. 
And so even in those most difficult of times, God still is producing. God still is working. And, and what a glorious thing that we can look at that our triune God uh, this weekend in Holy Trinity Sunday and look at the work of God in creation. And, and we don't have to look any further than today as I look out the window. And yeah, we've got some clouds, but, but a break in the sun just came through and uh, illuminated the green on the trees and how beautiful that is and, and that God has created that. And then we look at uh, the work of his son, redemption, and, and that's the work that's being spoken of here by the psalmist in Psalm 97. Uh, but that, that Christ himself, he faced the darkest of days. Uh, he faced the darkest of hours. And he did that for you. He did that for me. And, and what a great thing that we can hang our, our hearts on knowing that, that Christ has paid that ultimate price. He has redeemed us and bought us back from sin and, and the evil one, all the darkness. And so, yeah, we're going to face some, some trials. We're going to weather the storms today. But no, even in these darkest of days, God is still working, his seed is still taking root, and it is still bringing forth fruit. And, and so then we go to verse 12 from the psalmist today. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. So just as important to know that God's working through these days is just as important for us to, to rejoice and give him thanks uh, in all seasons, and, and today we can give them thanks uh, for, for health. We can give them thanks for life. Uh, I was speaking with one of our musicians yesterday, and a friend of hers uh, passed away at the age of 46, and he was a pastor. Uh, but in his sermon, uh, you can, as she was describing it to me, you can hear him rejoicing. He actually recorded his own funeral sermon, and he told those who were listening uh, that he is now in heaven and and how we can rejoice knowing that even in those darkest times and he uh, had cancer and died from cancer and those last days were very difficult, uh, we will go through some difficult times and, and sometimes that's tough for us to understand why, why God are, are you allowing this to happen, but, but know that God is working and, and go back to verse 11, light is sown in the righteousness. We know that he is bringing forth fruit even in those dark days. And so we can rejoice even though we don't understand. We don't understand the mysteries of God. We don't understand all of his works, but we can trust in his promises. And one day soon, like Eric, who has been called home to our heavenly father, and he's rejoicing in heaven, we too can rejoice in the light of our Lord and that he has brought forth fruit on this day. So today we continue to go to the Lord in prayer. Again, we continue to lift up Amy's mother, Thelma, who's in the hospital up in Mankato. Uh, Shirley's brother-in-law, Fred, who's in the hospital. Uh, Patty's brother-in-law, uh, Gary, who had a successful surgery. So today we, we give God thanks and praise, but we also ask uh, that uh, the Lord continue to be with him as, as he will begin chemo treatments here so shortly. We also give thanks to God that Mary is home safely. And of course, we lift up to the Lord today, Cassandra and Chris, as they join together as one man, one woman in holy matrimony. Uh, so let's go before the Lord in prayer. Merciful Lord, through the angels, you called the women at the tomb to remember that the Christ must be delivered into the hands of the sinful and be crucified on the third day, be raised from the dead. Help us to remember that it is only through suffering that we enter into glory and that in our sufferings, we participate in the sufferings of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ on this glorious Saturday in Pentecost, Go in peace today and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.